And there's some things that we even pray for, but we curse in the same tongue. This is what I mean by that. There are some things that we're like, Lord, I'm praying for this person to change. Lord, I'm praying that circumstances will change. I'm praying that I'll no longer be single. I'm praying for marriage. I'm praying for this house. I'm praying for jobs to change. I'm praying for kids. But then, but then we turn around, we talk with our friends and we're like, nothing's going to change. I'm always going to be single. There's no good men out here. There's no good women out here. There's, you see, like, they're not, they're never going to change. They're always stuck in their ways. They're, they're always so angry. Like we are pr praying and in the same mouth spouting curses. Why are we like this y'all? What's good family. Welcome to the for my good podcast, where we share the authentic and unfiltered Christian perspective to build in faith, purpose, and spiritual maturity. If you're new here, I'm Taylor. And if you're a part of the family, then welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking more about how I made my prayer board and how to build a consistent prayer habit. So I wanted to make a prayer board because I wanted to be more consistent with prayer. I knew that the word, the, the Holy Spirit was just working on my heart just to say, like, you need to put more faith behind your prayers. And at first I was like, okay, ouch. Like, but that conviction was strong, y'all, because I just felt like my prayers would just hit the ceiling. I felt like my prayers were just me just talking to myself. And I had to remind myself that I was actually talking to God, that I was talking to an actual person, you know? And I, I wanted to be reminded of that. I wanted to put... Um, that at the forefront, like, yes, I would have prayers in my prayer journal and that would be nice. Like I have that like tucked away and everything, but I, I knew that, uh, pr there's power behind prayer and the enemy wants to try to distract you in saying like, oh, your prayers aren't really going to God. Like God has other important things to do. He's not really listening to you. That's why nothing has really changed. And those are just attacks of the enemy, but those are fueling my mind. But then Whenever I would see like small wings from God or some people would say like, you know, the fingerprints of God on their lives where I would see prayers answered, where I would see that um, God is listening to me because I do start to see changes in people for the things that I prayed for. And I'll be like, oh, wait, I prayed for that. I mean, of course, I wouldn't tell them. But <laughs> but like, you know, if someone, you know, if I'm praying for like. I don't know, let's say someone at work, right? And I'm like, man, this person has a bad attitude, Lord. Like, I just pray that they are just positive. I pray that they don't come in here, like just, you know, complaining all the time because they just dampen the morale of the workplace. And I just remember just praying that, like, and well, I guess I just, I said it was an example, but it was real. But anyway, <laughs> um, so I just remember just praying that and praying that and praying that. And then it was literally one day, when the person was just like, oh my gosh, I'm being so negative. I need to start being more positive. And I was like, mm. or like <laughs> that's an answer prayer. That is an answer prayer. So it's just one of these things where um, I have to remember that prayer works, that there's power behind prayer. And that when I start to put real faith you know, and believing all the words that I'm saying and not just saying like all these empty, like, you know, half spoken kind of like prayers, like prayer is real. Like prayer is a real conversation with God. And the moment that I really got that through my head and got that through to my heart and got that through to my faith, that was when things started to change. And I realized that my prayers need to be a first resort rather than a last one, that prayers need to be a first line of defense rather than something that I just do on the back end after I've done everything that I could possibly do in my own strength and just be like, oh, God, can you fix this? Like, I know I made a mess, but can you just like clean it up? And I know I needed to put just more emphasis on my prayer life, especially just building more as a Christian, because that's what God has called us to do, right? Like, it says, it says in the word that Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. And he wasn't doing that just to, for showboating. He wasn't doing that just for, um, you know, because it just looked like the right thing to do. He was doing that because it's something that we need. It's something that needs to be a part of our spiritual disciplines. It's, it's something that we're called to do as believers, to actually be in communication with the Lord, to be in communication and be sensitive to the words of the Holy Spirit. Right. But then on the flip side of prayer 
it's not just me talking, but it's me listening. So that's something that I've been starting to do too, where I would just sit in silence and it'll be a while sometimes. <laughs> it'll probably be about 15, sometimes 20 minutes. Um, hopefully I don't fall asleep. I'll be very honest, <laughs> but I'll just sit there just in silence, like just trying to listen to what um, God is trying to put on my heart. And from there, that's when I would write it down in my journal, some of the things, uh, some of the revelations that he would put on my heart. And I would search those in the scriptures because that's something too, where, and I, it's somewhere in the Bible, I know it for sure, but where it says, test the spirits, right? So even if I am listening to something, I need to make sure this is not my own thought. I have to make sure that this is not my own revelation. I have to make sure this is not the enemy trying to creep in and trying to distract me from, uh, personal time with God, right? So when I would write down some of those revelations that the Holy Spirit would reveal to me, I would make sure that I compare those and um, back that up with scripture because that's the way that that God works, right? He does not contradict his nature. He does not um, say one thing, but mean the other. He means exactly what he says and he would not um, contradict what's in the Bible, right? So um, there would just be some moments that I would do that. And also with prayer, some people are like, well, Taylor, like prayer is boring. I'm just sitting there and, you know, like nothing is happening. But prayers can look different for everybody. And I know I would have some times where I am on my knees and I'm praying and I'm like, sometimes I'll have tears, sometimes I wouldn't. But <laughs> but it's just like there's times where I am like that. And I'm in that posture of prayer. And I'm being um, just uh, just reflecting on um, who God is, uh, what God has done, and moving forward into how he wants me to fulfill my pur purpose, just to re uh, get some of that extra instruction. There are some times where I'm praying, and it's just a conversation. And I'm like, Lord, listen, like you heard what this girl said to me. Like I am trying <laughs> to keep it together. I am trying to um, like be a, a Christian and keep my cool. I'm trying to show the fruits of the spirit of kindness and gentleness. But this girl is getting on my last nerve. Like, of course, this is just an example. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure none of y'all are like that. Y'all are very holy. So but um uh, there's just times where I would have these conversations with God and it's just like, I'm talking with a friend, I'm talking out loud. And of course, I mean, not in public, you know, um, because I, you know, I feel like prayer time is just an intimate thing. And I would just talk out loud and I'm like, Lord, you saw this today. You know, what's on my heart. There's no need for me to even try and hide nothing from you because you know it anyway. Um, like, or Lord, like, you know, that I'm struggling with this and I, there's this, this, this just this temptation. Like I need to like, please lead me in your Holy spirit, lead me to scriptures in your word that can help me, um, combat this temptation, combat this addiction, combat, uh, the, uh, works in the schemes of the enemy that's trying to infiltrate my heart. So there are diff different times where prayer would look like that too. There's sometimes where prayer is just like one word and it's like help help like lord help me like <laughs> help me lord because i i i just need help like i need your strength lord like i need your word i need your power in me because i can't get through the day um so prayer can look different but i think when i was listening to another podcast and um of a of a preacher and uh, or maybe it was in a sermon and he was just saying how we just need to get in the habit of uh praying throughout the day because we like to really just um, uh, separate days um, for God when God wants to be incorporated in our day. Hopefully I said that right. But <laughs> but just in a sense of like, we like to just separate and compartmentalize God for just one day, you know, usually on Sundays or if it's for Bible study. Instead, God wants to be um, all up in your days, like in every single day, every single moment, like even as you're brushing your teeth, even as you're doing your hair, even as you're talking with a friend, like God wants to be present and at the forefront of your mind and in your heart. So that can look like if I'm in the grocery store saying, what's a good example? I don't really have a good example, but like, Lord, should I get the coconut milk or the almond milk? I'm not like saying stuff like that. I'm just like, 
really just meditating on my day, um, really trying to just focus in on the word um, while I'm going through the grocery store, just like thinking about all of the things that I, I am privileged to, um, just showing gratitude, like, Lord, thank you that I can choose between coconut milk and almond milk. Lord, thank you um, that I do have um, uh, healing in my body. Thank you, Lord, that I do have my limbs so that I can walk. So it's just, it's small things like that where I just have those moments of almost like realizing that my mind is just kind of like empty and it's just like I'm floating through the day. That's when I would try to be more aware um, of what I'm thinking about. And I would say, okay, Lord, like, what do you want me to do today? What, what's something, is there a way that I need to pray for somebody today? Is there something that like, you know, do I need to do a heart check on something? Is there something that I need to repent for? Please bring at the forefront. So it's just times like that where I would um, try and pray throughout the day too. Uh, times in your commute. Like when you're always trying to fill your mind with like, you know, YouTube, music, podcasts, whatever. Like there's times when you can just be still and just really be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Um, so there's just different ways that you can pray throughout the day and just allowing God to be incorporated throughout your entire day and not just being compartmentalized to one certain time. Hey dad, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go. I'm recording a podcast. Thanks. Well, okay. We do your podcast. Make sure you do voice inflection. Speak clear. <laughs> right? Let the energy flow. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Knock him out. Kennedy, what you up to? <laughs> okay. So <laughs> commercial break but um yeah so with <laughs> now I lost my whole train of thought um but with prayer and building that discipline um I knew that I felt almost like I was doing the wrong thing right like I felt like I just couldn't get it right like I just remember just growing up and everybody just had these long elaborate prayers or they would always say something good or they're able to quote this scripture and I'm like I can't pray like that I would get intimidated for real you know and I was like well God I can't pray you know but it's honestly as long as you're able to reveal what's on your heart as long as you're able to um, reflect on some of the things that God has done for you as long as you're able to um, worship who God is like, God, I know like you are love. God, you are gracious. God, you are merciful. God, you are holy, 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 completely set apart. These are some of the things that you can first recognize um, and acknowledge who God is. Right. Then you can recognize what he's done for you. Thank you, Lord, for your my family. Thank you, Lord, for the home that you've blessed me with. Thank you, Lord, for um, being able to have food on my table for, for being able to have a job for being able to have a healthy family. Um, and then from there, that's when you can go into a petition and like saying like, Lord, like, you know, um, I'm, I really just need uh, a word from you. And can I, you know, should I go for this job or that job? And so after you're able to go through, um, all of these things and just recognizing who God is, what he's done for you. Then from there, that's when you can start going um, and talking about some of the things that you have on your heart, right? Uh, so when making my prayer board, <laughs> that's what it really boils down to, right? So when making my prayer board, I made three different types of envelopes. And I'll be very honest that the envelopes were bigger than my, I thought and the board was smaller than I thought. So I'm only able to fit like three envelopes and I just had to squeeze in a fourth one um, for prayer requests. But I got my stuff from Hobby Lobby, Amazon. Um, that's where I got majority of my things from. Um, when making my prayer board, I do have one envelope for self, one envelope for family, one envelope for community. Of course, your envelopes can look completely different. Like you can have one for your spouse, one for your children. You can have an envelope for work, an envelope for your goals. Um, it can be for your business. So your envelopes can look completely different. 
But I knew since I didn't have much space, <laughs> I wanted to at least group it into focusing on um, things for myself, like for my purpose, praying for a hedge of protection around me, praying for um, walking in my calling that God has for me, a pr- uh, an envelope for my family, um, prayer for things like a hedge of protection around them, praying for healing and good health, uh, praying for their salvation. Even that's been a big prayer for me. Uh, for my family, just making sure that they are um, truly walking in their purpose and uh, even just their circle of influence. I just pray that they can be on fire for the Lord and moving forward and sharing the gospel, right? And that goes into my last one, like community. So with community, that can be praying for our churches, praying for our leaders, praying for our, our nation, praying for the uh, the world, even um, in, in the hurt that people are going through, um, praying for a revival, right? A, a, a great revival in our on our world that people can come to know Jesus. Uh, that's something, too, that you can pray for. So that's that's kind of how I have my um, envelopes arranged. And I actually have. This is like an example card and I didn't because I didn't want to make like a, a true one. Oh, let me see if I can get this to focus. There we go. Oh, it's kind of backwards. It might be backwards. <laughs> Whoops. Well, um, I'll make sure I just insert a picture. But I want to at least put an example. So these are what like some of the cards look like inside of my folders um, or inside of my my envelopes. I want to put an example because, of course, like the prayers that I do have inside of my envelopes, um, they uh, are very personal, right? Like there's just different things that I'm praying for and things that I'm praying for the community, for my family that I don't want to just completely share with the world. There is still a boundary, right? But for some of the people that are just listening in on the podcast, um, even with the paper that I have, like I have examples for prayer for strength to share my testimony, um, a hedge of protection around my family, building the habit of memorizing a new scripture, um, incorporating weekly fasting, praying out loud during small group, finding a spiritual mentor, opportunity to share the gospel, um, prayer for the leadership of our church. And then I put the date there for sure. But then I also put um, the date, uh, another date if it was answered. And I highlight that date just to show that God does come through and answer your prayers. And I think keeping a record of answered prayers is really helpful too. I remember listening to one sermon where they said that um, good Christians have the best memories and or faithful Christians have the best memories, something like that. Uh, I'm sure I'm misquoting it, but basically just in a sense of there are times where we could be like the Israelites in the wilderness, right? Where you forget all of the miracles that God has done for you, but here we are complaining in the wilderness and that's why we're stranded and not able to get to the promised land in 40 years, you know? So, or it takes 40 years to get to the promised land. So that's kind of some of the things that I'm trying to... Um, keep at the forefront of my mind that God does answer prayers, that God is working where even though you may be single and you're like, Lord, I am desiring for a husband, or maybe you may be um, looking for a new job and you're like, Lord, I need a new job. I can't focus on nothing else, but God has brought you through so much. And it's remembering those answered prayers where you, um, can build your faith and build that endurance, um, in your Christian walk. Right. So that's one thing is uh, having a prayer board, putting um, envelopes in there uh, and putting different cards in there to represent the different prayers. Now, something else that I have on my prayer board are scriptures. Now, with those scriptures, something that I'm trying to do is learn how to not learn, but incorporate the habit of praying through scripture. So I'll put an example. And I also bought this this book. This little book has uh, scriptures in it that I've written. So what this book is that I got on Amazon is a uh, business card holder. So I bought little cards that are like the size of business cards and I put scriptures on them so that when I do have scriptures on my prayer board, I can take those down. I can exchange them. Um, I can put this in, I can put it in this prayer uh, scripture booklet And so I can save them, right? And put it somewhere where they're nice and safe. So for an example of reading through the scriptures, I'll go through, let's see, um, Isaiah 43, one and two. So I'll just read the entire scripture first. Fear not for I have redeemed you. 
I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. The flame shall not consume you. So to pray through the scripture um, would be uh, for the first thing, fear not. Lord, you have told me not to fear. You have told me that I have that you have redeemed me. You have redeemed everything that I've gone through. Um, so that's why I don't need to be afraid. Lord, remove this spirit of fear from me. Lord, um, thank you for redeeming me. Uh, thank you for bringing me out of the pit of my past. Um, thank you for calling me by name. Thank you for knowing my name. Thank you for claiming me as your own and buying me with a price, Lord God. Um, you said that when I pass through the waters that you'll be with me. So Lord, when whatever circumstance that I go through, remind me that you are always there. Remind me that you are the good shepherd. Remind me of your sovereignty, that no matter what circumstance, no matter what winds and waves are around me, that you are always with me. Through the rivers, they will not overwhelm me. Thank you, Father God, for giving me the strength. Thank you for putting me in your hands that I will not be overwhelmed, that I will not be stressed, that I will not um, be anxious in Jesus name. So thank you for keeping me while going through these circumstances. When I go through the fire, when I go through situations that look like there's no way out, when it looks like everything around me is burning up, that everything around me is in flames, you said that I will not be burned. You said that it will not consume me. So, Father, when I go through the fire, when I go through these rivers, when I go through the waters, you are with me. You are keeping me. You are protecting me. And you are not letting any of these circumstances, these worldly circumstances to overpower my own spirit because I know that the strength of the Holy Spirit is within me. So that's an example. Uh, that's, I know I, I felt it. I was, oof, I, I, I felt it. Um, when you go, like when you just read, we just read the scriptures. There's a reason why they say the word is, is, is alive. Right. There's a reason why this um, this old, old book is still very much relevant today and just having the power to read through scriptures. And I don't know if it moved you like it moved me because if it moved me, man. I was I was about to start shouting for real. <laughs> but it's that's just an example of how you can um, pray through scriptures. So that's why I wanted to at least put scriptures on my prayer board, too. But I also wanted to keep this booklet so that I can put some of those prayers and exchange some of them for uh, some of the other scriptures that I want to focus on. Um, something else that I have is, and I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna open this, but um, I have a jar and I keep this jar actually um, like near my, my kitchen, somewhere where I pass by every single day because uh, with that jar, I, that's where I have prayer requests from my Bible study group. So I started a Bible study group um, with other women and we meet once a month. And something that we do is that we get these note cards, we write our prayer request on them, we write our name on the back, and uh, that's when we um, switch that off and we trade that with different people. And that's when we get to pray for each other over the course of that month until the next Bible study. So um, even though I have someone's card, someone else has my card and they're praying for me too. So that's what this jar is full of. It's full of the note cards where um, the different personal prayer requests that people have given me um, in confidence, of course. So that's why I'm not going to just dig through that or share that on the screen. And with this jar, I mean, soon it's going to be filled up, I'm sure. Right now it's kind of empty since we've only had a few Bible studies so far, just for maybe the past like four or five months. So um, with these prayer requests, I put those somewhere where I can see it so that I remember to pray over those prayer requests, um, just to make sure that they do come to pass because we're called to be intercessors, right? And people think that intercessors is like this weird term where you're supposed to just be, you know, praying all throughout the night, all throughout the day, no food, no water. Like intercessor can mean anything, right? To different people. But just to be interceding means that you are standing in the gap, 
right? You are standing between um, praying for someone and uh, the release of God's power, right? So I'm sure that, and that's not the exact <laughs> correct explanation, but really with interceding, it just means that you are able to be um, praying on behalf of someone else's prayer request. But to be an intercessor just means that you're just praying on behalf of others. That's all that it means. It doesn't have to be anything weird. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. To be an intercessor just means that you're standing in the gap and that you're just praying on behalf of someone. So whether I'm praying on behalf of my family, I'm praying on behalf of my friends, praying on behalf of my church, my community, my uh, people in the workplace, uh, volunteer organizations. To be an intercessor doesn't have to be something where it's like everything has to be weighty on you. It just means that you're able to help assist and provide extra spiritual power um, and extra spiritual access to the spiritual realm of the different weapons that are in the heavenly places, right? So if someone is going through a battle, if someone has a prayer request, they don't have to battle that on their own. To be an intercessor means that you are there and you're like, look, Lord, like they need help. Send extra help uh, for them. Send, like there have been different times in the Bible that um, people have interceded for their country. Uh, people have interceded for other people. Daniel, Nehemiah, just to name a couple. Um, Moses, um, Abraham, when he interceded for Lot, you know. So it's like there's different examples in the Bible where, where people went to God on, the, on behalf of others to help um, bring an answer to a prayer. So when it comes to prayer, honestly, it's just something between you and God. It's something where you can um, do it in community. I know there were times where I truly felt intimidated by prayer and I was not praying in small group. I was not praying like, you know, in front of people, in front of crowds, because I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, I don't what if I say the wrong thing? What if I say the wrong words? But just remember that it's just you and God. God knows your heart. God knows the words that you want to say. And as long as you lean on the fact that prayer is a conversation where you're trying to talk with God and you're not trying to rely on how people think of you, as long as you keep that at the forefront of your mind, then the Holy Spirit will prompt you with words to say. The Holy Spirit will prompt you with scriptures that you can put inside of your prayers so that um, you have the words to say in front of a crowd. You have the words to say while you're while you're praying by yourself. Um, but getting in the habit of prayer. So I started a prayer call with some of my friends. Um, I started praying at small group and uh, just to throw myself out there, you know, um, it was probably a short prayer, <laughs> but uh, at the same time, I just, you know, they, they knew that it was coming from a honest place. And I'm glad that the people in my small group didn't judge me for the first time that I prayed out loud. But that's a good place where you can do it, right? Praying in front of your family, praying in front of your friends. Um, when you just get in the habit of building that spiritual muscle, then that's when you'll get more comfortable with prayer. That's when you'll be able to, um, if someone is asking like, hey, can you pray for me? It'll be a random time. And it's like, Wait, like I, you know, you don't have to be like, oh, let me get my Bible. Let me get, let me get my, my papers and everything together. No, you don't have to do that. Like, cause there are times even in the workplace where someone's like, Taylor, like I'm having a rough moment right now. Can you pray for me? Like, and I'm like, oh yeah, girl, I'll pray for you. But then they're like, no, can you pray for me? Like right now. And I'm like, oh, right now, now. And they're like, yeah. And so, <laughs> so then that's when you like, you just, you know, you lay your hand on them. And I'm not saying like you put on their forehead, nothing, but put on their shoulder and just praying a word over them, praying the scriptures that giving a word of encouragement, giving a word of strength. Um, and the Holy Spirit will prompt you um, in the different like direction that you should go when it does come to prayer. It's not always going to be perfect. It's not always going to be this big and glamorous and have these extra like huffs and puffs in there. And, you know, you start singing and dancing and all that during prayer. Like, I don't do all that, you know, because I mean, and not to come for people that do that's perfectly fine but for me and my conversations with the lord they don't look like that and at first i was intimidated to pray out loud because i thought that my prayers had to look like that so this is just a reminder that it doesn't but a way that you can start off with getting in the habit of prayer is just having an accountability buddy so if there's a friend where you're like hey every Tuesday evening or every Monday morning or every Sunday after church, can we pray together so that we can get in this habit of prayer? 
Um, you can have an ac- accountability partner. You can start again, like, like what I was doing, praying through the scriptures. You can start asking people, how can I pray for you? You know, um, just to get into that habit of prayer, just asking your friends that question can really go, like asking your friends, asking your family, um, asking people you work with, how can I pray for you? That's something that one of my my friends from church, she started doing that. And I'm like, you know what? I need to start adding that at the end of my conversations um, with people, you know, just how can I pray for you? And that's also how I can build up my spiritual muscle. And I think the last thing I'm going to add and I think I really, <laughs> I really need to just bring this point home. God sees the motive behind your prayers. Like God cannot be manipulated. Like, so just remember that. Like, I don't want people to be like, oh, as long as like I pray, as long as I say like, Lord, like help me. Da, 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 da. Like, you know, he can like bless you with, you know, whatever. God cannot be manipulated. Don't try to have a wrong motive behind your prayers. You want to go in there with an honest conversation because God knows everything anyway. So I want to just put a strong emphasis on that because there are sometimes people that want to um, show off their prayers just to show that they can pray uh, a good prayer, good prayer, whatever that means. Um, There are some people that, you know, want to just say, um, you know, like, Lord, like, give me a husband, Lord, uh, give me this job, Lord, bless me with this business, Lord, give me uh, thousands of followers. You know, it's God knows your most behind your prayers. And as long as you start to read the word and start to build a genuine relationship with God um, and just getting to know God for him and knowing how much he loves us and bringing other people to know the gospel, We shouldn't be praying prayers that are selfish. We shouldn't be praying prayers that are um, self-centered around goals that we want to achieve. They shouldn't be, you know, and and this is not just to come down on you like or but I hope the Holy Spirit convicts you in this because I mean, now, granted, there's a time where I was doing this, too, where I'll just be like, okay, well, I prayed about it or. Ooh, or using that phrase, let me pray about it. Let me da 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 da. And knowing good and well, you're not praying about it like. (laughs) <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going off on a whole tangent, y'all. But we don't. Tr- why are we treating prayer so lightly? Why are we treating prayer like it's just some half-hearted like conversation with the most holy God who created the entire universe? Like, <laughs> why are we treating that so lightly? Why are we going into prayer thinking, you know, even when we pray over our food, you know, thank you for this food, amen. Jesus wept. Like, what? Like, can we be more serious, please? Like, can we can we act like we are talking to God, like Elohim, like the Trinity, Jesus, our sa- our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit who is housed in us? Like, can we show more reverence? Can we show can we show more honor? Can we show more respect instead of just trying to just say a a small little prayer or whatever? Like, you know. I'm sorry, I got off on a whole, whole tangent, but I want, I think the reason why I'm so worked up about this is because I want us to be a true prayer for people, prayerful people that has power behind the words that we're saying. I don't want it to be where we're talking to God so half-heartedly, like we talk to each other. I don't want it to be where we are literally trying to have quiet time with God Almighty, and we're being selfish instead of trying, like we're, we're putting our needs before what God has put on our hearts. You know, like we're over here praying for great success, great riches, great fame, and there's nothing wrong with praying those prayers, but what's your motive? You need to do a heart check. Pray for conviction. Pray for your enemies. That's what we really need to be doing. We need to be praying for the people that hurt us. Praying for, and it's like, Taylor, that's crazy talk. I can't pray for them. But God will give them revelation. God will give them conviction. When you start praying for people, you can really start to see the glory of God being revealed. And this is the reason why I'm so worked up about this. Because I just... We need to treat God with reverence. And recognize the power behind our words, just like what it says in James, because there are some words that we say 
And there's some things that we even pray for, but we curse in the same tongue. This is what I mean by that. There are some things that we're like, Lord, I'm praying for this person to change. Lord, I'm praying that circumstances will change. I'm praying that I'll no longer be single. I'm praying for marriage. I'm praying for this house. I'm praying for jobs to change. I'm praying for kids. But then, but then we turn around, we talk with our friends and we're like, nothing's going to change. I'm always going to be single. There's no good men out here. There's no good women out here. There's, you see, like, they're not, they're never going to change. They're always stuck in their ways. They're, they're always so angry. Like we are pr- praying and in the same mouth spouting curses. Why are we like this y'all? And this is not to condemn y'all. I'm really just, I'm just passionate about this because I was doing the same thing. I would pray to God praying for God to change my circumstances. But then like I would have that vertical relationship with him and be like, okay, God, amen. Yes seal it with the Holy Spirit, send your angels. But then I'll talk with my friends and be like, yeah, girl, you know, like, you know, things here are just terrible. I just can't with this. Like, you know, um, this person just keeps on making me mad. Like, why y'all? Why? I, again, this is not to come down on y'all. This is just conviction in my own Holy Spirit because I've done this. I've done this. And I'm not saying that I'm perfect, but I just pray (laughs) that you guys um, truly watch the words you say. And this is probably gonna be another podcast too about being mindful of the words that we say, but just being mindful that there is, we're gonna have to make an account on all of the words that we say and everything that's within our heart um, when we go before God. And we don't know when that is. But my prayer is that we do just go forth and repent and say like, Lord, I know some of the things that I've done, um, that some of the things that I've said, um, I repent for these things, but Lord, let's move forward in a better spirit. Let's move forward in more positivity. Let's move forward in kindness. Let's move forward in gentleness and love and joy, peace, patience. Let's move forward with sowing good seeds. There was a um, reading plan Bible reading plan that me and some of my friends were doing. And it was just on like um, the harvest fast, right? And it was for like five or seven days and where uh, it just talked more about the, the the sowing and reaping of different seeds. And there were some, and something that really stuck out to me was praying for forgiveness for the seeds that I've sown unintentionally. And that really stuck out to me because There are some seeds that I've sown unintentionally that I don't want a harvest on those things. There are some times, there were some things where um, I may have talked badly about someone. Uh, There may have been times where I talked badly about myself. There may have been times where I um, was uh, doing actions that I know I shouldn't have been doing. There were times where... (laughs) Y'all, we know, we know it was what sins we had and the, the the motives that we had in our heart, the lustful things, the things that we, the thoughts we had, the, um, just, just to be completely transparent, just, you know, just some of the, um, things you do behind closed doors that you think that nobody knows. Those are seeds that you're sowing. And I don't want to, to reap any of those things. I don't, I'm praying to God. I'm like, Lord, please, please just kill those plants in those tracks. Like, I don't want to reap any of those, that harvest. So we just need to be more mindful and be more dedicated to speaking um, in words that reflect God's word. We have to be more conscious of our speech, of our conduct. Um, We need to be more conscious that we are truly living as Christ ambassadors because our words matter. Our words have power. Um, There's a reason why these scriptures are in the Bible that uh, there's, you know, life and death comes from the power of the tongue. And I just pray that you guys continue to speak life. That's my soul prayer. I know I went off on a little bit of a tangent, but y'all this this stuff means like this this makes a difference this truly does make a difference in our lives this makes a difference in our walk with the lord this makes a difference in us as christians and the moment that we truly start to solidify a prayer life in um 
a prayer life and walking in the spiritual disciplines and truly getting on the same wavelength um, with the Holy Spirit so that we can be more in tune with what God has for us, the stronger we can be in our walks and in our faith. But I hope this episode has blessed you. I pray that you have an amazing week and I'll see you in the next episode.